Hello everyone, welcome back to my channel. This is Lea and this is my November Floss Tube Update 2020. Today I have so many things to show you. I'm gonna show you my progress of the Stitch Finale Challenge where I touch every whip that I have of this year and work on it for a set amount of hours. Most of the time it was five or six hours. And I have three new Gecko Rouge kits that I'm going to show you. I have, I want to show you my floss cards, what I have planned for the year finale. And um, I can't remember right now because I recorded this a couple of days ago. And even though I just cut the German version, I don't know, but you're going to see what I show you. I've brought back many whips you haven't seen in a while or this episode maybe some whips you haven't seen in a while. Next time I will show you the rest. So I'm doing the vo voiceover right now so I have to listen in as most of you already know of what I'm saying in German so I don't forget to say anything. Okay I'm reaching for something. Oh, here are my floss cards. So I saw a new floss tuber, the Stitchy Reader, and she wondered how she could organize her threads. And so I just wanted to quickly show you my preferred floss organizer, which I'm making myself with just some cardstock, like scrapbooking paper and um, a hole puncher. And this is a special version where I have glued some like pins pins on the back with some with cardstock and I don't know what the material is called in English right now, I'm so sorry. Um but this is basically like a Peco organizer, but low budget and I put this on my sofa when I'm stitching right next to me and I go through them like this to look for a color and the big advantage of this is that you can see many colors at once so you just pick it up with a needle like that and you can easy, easily put it back on the card but it's also as easy if you don't do this pin design to put it with a loop on back on the card. But this is just, you know, a little second quicker than the other version. I will do a video about how I make these in the future for sure, but um, they're a little difficult to make. So I w I'm already, I've already filmed a video of kidding up my next two, ha two hates, which I'm gonna start pretty soon, as soon as all the flosses arrive, which will take probably four weeks. But I'm kidding up what I have right now and make the floss cards. And this is go, this will be a very slow and calm video where I go through my floss dash with you. And, um, yeah, you will see that in the near future. But okay, so first Gamer from Gekka Rouge. It's a design by Medusa Dollmaker. And I've worked on this for six hours, I think, in November for my challenge. And that's how far I've come. So on the right, you see where I was last time. And I didn't stitch that much this year on it. And I filled in a row of blocks on the diagonal, as you can see. And it's so much fun. I think for you guys, this is your favorite project. And for me, it's too. <laughs> and so I have to rip out the top here still. I try to, if I could do 10 stitch with the background, if it uh, would look as much. I know it looks different, so I wouldn't recommend mixing those. But I thought if I just do the background here... Um, it would be fine, but I, on 25 count, I really didn't like the look of the 10 stitches. Compared to 1 over 1, it looks just a tiny bit more messy. But, you know, to be honest, it's just, you probably don't even see it. It's just when I'm really in front of it, but it bothers me enough that I 
can't go on like that. <laughs> um, so yeah, that's how far I've come on that. And I really, really, really want to do go reach 50% on this project. I'm at 21% right now. So, oh, I'm talking about challenge groups later in the video. School of Magical Stitches and Whipco by Jessie Marie and quickly explain it. So the next project, number two, is my Zelda piece. I don't think this is available online anymore. I don't have the PDF version. I only have an edited version of a, that a friend made that she didn't want me to pass on. So sadly, I can't send you the pattern, but there's a smaller version on Etsy when you look for Zelda stained glass cross stitch patterns. Now I've worked on this page right now. I've skipped this page on the left because there's lots of stitches that are old that I've stitched without a hoop and they're a little loose and I stitched them after I made a long long stitchy break. And I really don't like the stitches, so I have to rip out a lot of that um, because I, it bothers me too much. I, <laughs> I'm too much of a perfectionist. I can't deal with that, but I really don't want to rip it all out at once. So I'm just stitching and on the new page on here and then... In between, I'm ripping a bit out of the old stitches that I don't like. I don't have to rip out all the stitches, but yeah, some of them. So I filled in the pink on here, which I was missing. I had uh, some floss deliveries. This is stitched with CXC, by the way, two strands on 14 count. And I filled in some of the greens and yeah, some of the pinks that I was missing down here. So this page is almost finished. So next one, number three of my challenge was this Heaven and Earth Designs Mini Witching Hour by a designer called, I don't know her first name, but she's called Baker, but it's discontinued now, which scared me a little bit. That's why with the next sale, I'm going to buy some charts, at least two. <laughs> um, yeah. So this is stitched on 28 count with 10 stitch and on the left you see where I was last time and I got some good progress and now 10 stitch is really quick when you don't have as many colors, for me at least. I talked to someone in a German floss tube group and this I'm showing you this fabric is from China and it's so stiff, it's horrible but I'm, it's fine, but yeah, I wouldn't buy there again. Now, I love how this all turns out, but this is confetti. This is a lot of confetti, and with minis, you have more confetti than with the big ones, of course, because you have less space to make this a realistic design, and it gets really, really bulky with two strands, because you have to... Um, you have two strands on the back when you stop your stitch and that makes it really really bulky compared to stitching with one one strand where you only have one strand to sew in. Um, I'm now debating if I should maybe only do the background with 10 stitch. I hope I don't hate it as much as on my gamer. I already tried it there, but this is 28 count. And the stitches for me look way neater on 28 count, the 10 stitches. So I'm confident I'm trying it on a different part of this page. You see all those part threads, how many different colors are in here. It's doable, but I have to push the needle through very very hard and that takes a little bit of the fun away. I think I can push through but I will just try. Here's my back so you see there's like a big knot of floss. That's really thick and it's really hard to push push the needle through. So oh I have to speak louder again I'm sorry. Um, yeah 
that's where I am on that. Maybe I will go down on the right with the background in 10 stitch and whenever there's something from the front of the image I will try and do full cross on here and see if I like it. Because you see the difference up close but when there's just the foreground in 1 over 1 and the background in 10 maybe it doesn't bother me as much. So I will try that. And um, yeah, these are my floss cards from this project. They're one of my earlier versions and um, I just printed out all the numbers and symbols on printer sticker paper and used a simple hole puncher for this. And I have so much floss on here. I started to change that on Gamer because as you stitch on this for years and years and have friction on the threads and pull them out of the bag and have them on the sofa around, they get a little dull. And so I want to, as soon as I have the time, I want to reduce the amount of threads that I have on a floss card. I put them in a Ziploc bag and put a sticker on it and then you're fine. That's just my personal experience with that. Yeah, I hope I didn't forget anything. I have to listen in. Okay, I'm skipping a little bit here. So um, this is my thir fourth project. Yeah, it's the fourth of my stitch finale, my Mirabilia Cathedral Woods Goddess. I haven't worked on her for a while. I really don't know why, but I stitched a lot on her and I think I made six hours, but then I realized that I'm not happy with the Krynic color, no, with the Petit, petit Treasure Braid color. So I stitched all of that part of her dress and that leaf, and it's really fun. I really don't know why I don't, put, I don't stitch on her more often. I don't know. So hopefully the challenge groups make me bring her out more often. I really love her. The colors are super beautiful. So what I've realized is that this silver color is too silvery. This is Vatican gold and it was recommended to me as a replacement for the Krennic that was called for. I don't remember which number it is, but um, it's too silvery. And I think I will put up a picture pretty soon where you can compare it and it's supposed to be a, just a little bit of a lighter gold tone and not such a big contrast. So yeah, I ordered another Petit Treasure Braid. I will rip out all the silvery parts and replace them with a light gold color. So I'm gonna change that. But that's fine. I'm I just can't I just don't like stitching on something when I'm not a hundred percent happy with it and I hope I can reuse the pity treasure braid once I ripped it out. So <laughs> then I thought, oh I'm almost done with the dress now, how much I stitched, and I'm only there, so I still have a little bit of dress to go. I always underestimate how in how much stitches there are in this Mirabilia because it looks pretty tiny to me before I started it but now I realize yeah well there's some work that goes into it and um, yeah but I love her. Now my next one and you haven't seen this since May that I forgot to say that I didn't know that when I uh, filmed the video in German so that's why you see very quickly the the text on the screen but I didn't stitch on it since May and that reason was that I didn't have all the flosses and I don't have it like perfectly set up with all which color is which and everything. This is where I was in May so I didn't have the NPI colors, they were still missing. I got them from 123 stitch and um, I'm really back on track with this. I love it. I love the NPI silks. They are so amazing. They're so bright. 
um, the first time I ordered just one strand of the, just one, you know, thingy of the NPI silk and, um, oh, here I added the herringbone stitches, by the way, I'm just showing that. Um, and I compared the MPI to the DMC equivalent and it's such a difference. They are so bright. You can't imagine that, what a difference it makes. And so the only thing that's missing now are two beads up here on these posts and I backstitched that um, whatever it is, I don't know, little decoration in the garden which makes it look so much better, it's so beautiful and on the outside I changed the color to a cottage garden, no, gee, I'm sorry, I don't know right now, I am I will for sure show you in my next video when I'm showing this what floss it is, but it's a silk and it's pretty easy to do these specialty stitches so far so the herring bone stitches were pretty easy and in the flowers in the center are like rose stitches I think and the instructions in the pattern are really good and the rest is all just cross stitch and back stitch so it's very easy so far I don't know what's coming but I think also Medieval Town Mandala is one of the more easier patterns of uh, of Martina Rosenberg. So yeah, loving the loving the MPI silks. They're amazing. So I think you pay you pay a bit for them, but they're very beautiful. And I converted a lot to DMC and that took a while. I I think in total I'm up to 20 hours just working on converting to DMC or other variegated flosses. So that's pretty difficult and I still have to decide on which color I'm using for the flowers here on the outside because they're charted lavender and I'm really not a big fan of lavender. I don't like the color. So the problem is once you start converting colors, you think, oh, I could change this and I could change that and maybe it would look better with this. And um, yeah, so that's the only thing that's left for me to decide on. I'm thinking maybe, maybe a rusty red like in the middle for the roses or maybe a pastel vintage pink, dusty pink, or like an antique pink, and um, or maybe a light blue. I don't know, it's so difficult. <laughs> but yeah, um, once I'm once I have it all set up, I will put up a my con full conversion, but right now I'm just confused myself what is what. So I will have to work on that. And I got some, like, the green stuff around the bottom is also, it's a, it's evergreen by, it's a water lilies evergreen that I got on eBay with, together with some other things. And I thought that color matched it so well. So I replaced that color as well. I made some changes and I'm really excited to see how it's going to look like in the end. There's going to be a lot of more gold and blues around here. It will be so much fun. And I can't wait to work on it more. That's my six hours. It's not a lot of stitching. A lot of time, it took a lot of time to do the back stitch on that decoration arch thing in the middle there but yeah I also changed some some colors in the back stitch I'm just I'm just crazy I'm just getting a little bit too obsessed with these things I can think about those for hours and not being able to decide on what I want to do <laughs> oh. Okay, I'm just putting this here in between. These are two needle minders from Greg Gecko Rouge and 
They are not the pictures that I ordered. I picked some needle minders of kits that I wanted to stitch or but not enough to get them. So I picked them as needle minders so I can have have a look at them when I'm stitching. Now sadly they changed the magnets in their needle minders. These are the smallest size they have and I think they're that's enough <laughs> to have on an on your Q-snap, but um, they're, the magnets are a bit smaller and they're a bit weaker. Or maybe it's just because they're a bit smaller. But I can tell you their shipping is so quickly, it's crazy. I ordered this, the last time I ordered it took like four weeks until it got here. And this time they kitted it within one week and shipping took like two days. And I hear, I read in the group uh, that they're quickly up there in, based in the UK. So they ship to Australia within a few days because they're shipping with FedEx now. And I talked to Glenn about it and he told me with all the discounts and stuff and people buying a bunch of kits at once, they that absolutely didn't cover the cost for shipping, so they had to raise their prices. But you get your stuff very, very quickly now, and it's absolutely fine. But here you go. Here I'm explaining now how the new needle miners look, and the magnet is very small in there for such a size. So it holds a few needles easy, but they fall off when I do as many as you see on my Sandman on that one here. And that's the amount of needles I usually have with me because I like to do parting, parting, parking and have lots of needles on my project. So here you can see the old one. And it's just a little tiny bit bigger, but that makes all the difference. So it keeps a few needles, but not as many as the old one used to. Still, they are very pretty. And they're not that expensive. But yeah, I'm a little bummed about that. Okay, now for the challenges. The last time I tried a challenge, I immediately lost all the urge to stitch on the project. I, it felt like a chore. I hated it. I didn't want to do it. I stopped the challenge immediately. But now I think I have to approach this in a different way. And I have some goals that I really want to achieve next year on some of my projects because I'm starting lots of stuff and I have some stuff that I didn't touch as much. And I'm really curious about School of Magical Stitches on Facebook. So if you want to join, there's a group on there. Just look for it. And now I'm going to explain what I know. So I never participated. I always heard people talk about it. And I always thought, oh my God, this is so much you have to do. I could never. But um, the text you hear, you see now it's every week. So if I want to... If, you, if I want to have 50% on Gamer by the end of next year, I have to stitch a thousand stitches every week. That's a lot. But I will try it, but I won't be so... I'm just putting my shadow line back here so you have something to look at while I talk a lot. Um, so to achieve my goal, I have to have some motivation from the outside so I'm trying again and I'm just so curious how this works and I already signed the papers when you join you have to fill in a google form and you tell them how much you stitch in a week so you will have like three houses I think this week uh, this year it will the topic will be Percy Jackson and I watched the movie and I didn't like it, but I will give the books a try. So 
there will be three houses that are or three groups that are like fighting against each other so by stitching stitching the challenges that they give you you earn points for your team and they say in the opening post that they put up more challenges that most people can do so you don't have to participate all the time when you are busy and you can't participate it's fine don't stress about it you don't have to do all the challenges so i told them that i will stitch like the lowest amounts like 500 to a thousand a week that was the lowest i think you could go on there and i will just pick the challenges that are fitting for me and I think you have to be really aware of that when you're joining the group. Otherwise, you will be over overwhelmed. And I'm trying to not get overwhelmed. So I want to do like the monthly challenge and then add like maybe one weekly challenge or only do the monthly challenge and make it work for me. And if I don't stitch for a week, then that's how it's going to be. And um, so, but this way, by knowing how, how much you can stitch in a month, they can divide the people in those groups with strong stitches and weak stitches. So it evens out. So all the teams are on average the same with the amount that people can stitch, which I really love. And it's super fascinating if you join it's a little bit overwhelming, but it's also so fascinating. The, they do so much in their free time to keep this group alive and they're consistent with the prompts every week and with the checking the homework, counting the points, having new ideas on what we can do. And it's just, I was in, it's amazing how much they do in this group and at least that is a reason for me that I want to do it it's just being part of this crazy awesome thing on there so yeah I'm trying that so the second one is whip go I want to do by Jesse Marie does stuff and I'm quickly explaining, explaining it. I did it especially for the German viewers because I don't think it's that well known there, but I still see people curious about that in the English speaking community. So basically you set up a bingo board. It's a bingo game. You set it up like that and you fill it with your own personal goals for the year. So if for example, you put in there, finish a page on Project X or stitch for a week on Project Y or um, start a new project, finish a project, FFO a project, whatever you want. You can put in there, stitch on five minutes for anything. You can make your own rules and make your own goals. So Jesse Marie puts pulls two numbers every month and these are the goals that are set as active and you don't have to finish them within that month so it's really a re really relaxing challenge and I think it's a really nice way to gamify your goal list and so once you once it's called, you can mark it, some color it, some put a special symbol on it. And um, once you've finished it, it's done and it can get counted. So then you set what your rewards will be if you get a bingo. So if you get a column or a diagonal, um, you have a bingo and you can set a small reward for that if you achieved all these goals in those parts. And in the middle is, a, is an X because it's 25 boxes and we, if she pulls two per month, you have 24 numbers or boxes that are called. So the middle one is a bonus. It's already good done. 
And then um, here, yeah, like you can do, if you have a bingo, you can say, I'm starting something new or I'm buying something for myself. And if you finish the complete bingo board, you can set a bigger reward for yourself. So here I'm just my example, like spend $200 in your favorite craft store. Or I saw some people have as rewards to ha buy a Chatelaine kit. You know, go for something big if you can achieve all of those goals. And I think it's a really, really fun challenge and you have so much freedom. You can still be part of a challenge and um, two goals per month is not that much. And as I said, you're not really limited to when you have to get those done. So I really, really love this challenge. That's why... If I, I will fill my board in and see what I can do with that and see if I can double dip with magical stitches, coincidentally. And if I, maybe I have to leave magical stitches because it's too much, then I still have this whip go board and can work on that. So yeah, that's what I thought. I will have so many starts in the beginning of next year, probably. I've kitted up so many things. All the materials are on their way and I really want to film kitting up videos with you. I don't see as many. Do you know a channel that does kitting up videos? Um, I really love to watch those calm videos where you see sorting and going through a stash and that's why I thought I could make those. Maybe there are for you. So soon there will be that kidding up of my two heaven and earths as f and making the floss cards as far as I have the materials on hand. But I still have to wait for my CXC order and I will tell you what heaven and earths I will pick. Okay, now quickly. I bought Night Spirit Studio patterns in the sale on Black Friday or it was like Sunday and I'm showing you them on screen right now. I love this coffin. So these are a few that I will start. I bought all the materials for all of them. Now I'm telling the German viewers about my hate and uh, full coverage plans. So the next one I got was Please Don't Summon Demons in the Bathroom. And I really want to do that and hang it in my bathroom. And that one is for my boyfriend. He loves like old Western movies. So I thought that was a fun one. I will start all of them. Probably the Western one later. But yeah. Now finally for my gecko kids. <laughs> You've all been waiting for this. I'm sorry. I talked your ears off before that. But here's Imperator Furiosa. She's from the Mad Max movies. Like the final, the last one. It's four, four, five, four. Oh my God. <laughs> but I really loved the movie. I loved her character. I love how she looks. She's strong and unusual and... I wasn't sure if I wanted her, but I'm going to leave the gold club in January. So I want to buy all the kits that I want right now, as long as I'm in the club. I have enough kits right now. In January, I have six kits right now. And in January, I'm going to get the seventh. And then I'm, I'm trying to avoid looking at any Gekuru social media for a while so I don't get tempted to buy more but I really have enough now so I got her and I'm really excited now that that I got her I love so many on so many of the Medusa Dollmaker ones on there but I can't stitch them all now I am seeing that my camera battery is dying and I wanted to unbox them all with you. But yeah, I mean, you see the flosses, you know what the deal is. If you want an extra video of me going through them, just say it in the comments. Maybe I'm doing that. 
So the second one is Bohemia and this is my second favorite for sure from Gecko Rouge and from Medusa right after Gamer which will forever be my favorite one. I love those details, those fishes and there are fishies down here and I'm thinking about doing her on 28 count. She's pretty big. She's even bigger than Gamer. She's 400 by 550. That's bigger than Gamer. I didn't think that. But there's lots of background. I looked at the chart already. I got the PDF versions. And the only place where it's confetti a bit is up here. Like her dress is not much color change. Her skin is not much color change. The background is a lot of the same color. Um, so there's just a little bit of the flowers, her jewelry, like the tree branches up there. And not even her face as much. So I am confident, fairly, <laughs> that I can do her in 10 stitch. So I ordered all of these in 28 count and I'm not sure if I will do them all in 10 stitch. So this is the third one. This is a Gold Club exclusive kit. You can only get this when you're in the special Gecko Rouge Club. And I fell in love with it the first time I saw it, but I'm really careful with what I buy. And this has been on there for I think half more than half a year. And um, but I always ca came back to it, and I really love it. I love the colors; they match my decoration in my living room. I have like dark blues, dark greens, and purples. So yeah, she's perfect. <laughs> and um, yeah, so I picked her. And uh, I also looked at the PDF, and it's only twenty. 200 by 350 or something so very manageable um, and I wanted to do her in 10 stitch as well because I thought it would, wouldn't be as much confetti especially with mainly background but even the background with the like the watercolor look there's lots of color changes changes here so I'm pretty sure I will do her one over one and I really still have to try if I like stitching one over one on 28 count. So even though I'm stitching for a while now, the fabric choice is still difficult to make. Really difficult. But I mean, I can still buy a new fabric and sell the old one. So it won't be, it won't cost me as much to change that. Okay, so now I'm talking about my epic year-end video. I hope it's going to get epic because I want to do a reaction on video on of my last December video. Of my plans that I had back then, I really don't remember anything. Um, what, where my stitches were at, what I wanted to do in this year and I know I didn't reach any goals because this year was a really bad stitching year for me. I had so little energy. I Most of the time I really couldn't stitch at all. I was just hanging out on the sofa doing nothing. But this is going to have to change with my challenges and I, I hope they push me a little bit to get more stitching done because I really miss it. It's not like, oh, you don't have to worry about that so much. It's that I really miss stitching a lot. So I'm back on track there and I'm really enjoying that. Um, so yeah, I will do a lot of editing, lots of side to side photos with my final episode of the year and try to do it as best as I can. And I'm really excited for that. Okay, so I want to start two heaven and earth designs. I want to start the Scarlet Wizard by Dimensions, the kit I got. And I want to pause 
my work on Serenity Garden because I'm not super excited about it right now. I really don't want to stitch it. I've been working on that for such a long time. I'm like, yeah, I, I'm pretty sure I will fall back in love with her. Any, but not, I think not this year, but who knows? And then all the smalls, I have many more smalls. I have the Star Trek sampler by Clouds Factory kitted. I have another one kitted, I think. You're going to see so many good things on here. Okay, so my battery is dying. I'm already telling you goodbyes and talking on as long as my camera lives. So right now... If it cuts off, I told you goodbyes. So thank you, thank you so, so much for watching. Thank you so much for subscribing. Your All your comments are so kind and lovely. And I read every single one and they mean so much to me. Especially right now when you don't see your friends and you don't see many people. To have this community is so awesome. And it means you have no idea how much this means to me, how much this helps me to feel better and not so, like, I'm not alone, but, yeah, it's just, it warms your heart, it makes you happy, so thank you so much, guys, for being there, and now, um, I hope to see you in the next episode, which I will put much, much energy in <laughs> for, <laughs> so see you next time. Okay, now I'm showing you at least the flosses from the Bohemia kit, as long as my camera survives. <laughs> the battery survives. I hope my camera is pretty expensive. I hope it survives longer than that. But um, yeah, so first page. I don't know how many colors there are. I think they're probably 99 again as gamer. It's the most exciting thing for me to go through and see all the floss colors for the first time of a kit. So what I'm doing right now on Instagram with a German girl is um, motivating each other to listen to audiobooks. I don't know if I'm the only one, but I have so many audible um, like vouchers that I still need to turn in. It's like 11 but because I at the at first I got I wanted to listen to a certain audiobook and I got that 30 day free trial and then I just kept collecting the vouchers and didn't turn them in because I was too scared that I might find a series that I want to watch and then I don't have enough vouchers and I have to buy the audiobooks and I didn't want to do that so and I didn't know where to start and what to listen to so Currently, I'm listening to a book by Brandon Sanderson and I want to get into his books because it sounds, he sounds really awesome. Something that I might like, a genre that I might like a lot. And, um, oh my God, I forgot the title in English. It's something with war. It's like a standalone book. That's not his first book. That's why I decided to start there and the idea is to just, you know, poke at each other. And um, I'm reading this along with someone on Instagram. So I found her and we're listening to it together and just telling us every couple of like every third of the book. We're mess messaging each other and just you know, just saying a sentence like, oh, I liked that so far, or I didn't like that so far, or that was fun. And that way to just have that little bit, little poke to get to listening to it. So if you want to join, just message me.